In 2012, Alexander Peripolichny was in his multi-million dollar London home, reading a book, and he started feeling a little bit ill, so he decided to step outside and go for a walk. But Peripolichny would only make it about a few hundred feet from his home before he would collapse to the floor and he would be dead. Alexander had a physical just a few months prior, and the doctor had shown no issues with his health. There should be no reason why this man should have collapsed, let alone died. And sure enough, when they conducted his autopsy, the coroner found nothing wrong with Peripolichny. There's nothing here to indicate a heart attack or a stroke. This man should be alive by all intents and purposes. Unbeknownst to the American population, US intelligence agencies along with MI6 would start to look into Peripolichny's death and try to figure out, was this an assassination? And within three years, they had the answer to that question, which was yes, he was not only assassinated, he was assassinated by somebody within Putin's own close circle. And what they found was that in his room, he had a reading lamp where he would sit down, turn on the light, and then start to read. He was an avid reader. And so this Chechen assassin actually put poison on the, the lampshade of his, his reading lamp. So when the lamp would turn on, it would heat up and it would atomize a poison into the air that he would then breathe in. But this wasn't a normal poison. This was a very sophisticated poison that was designed to no longer be detectable in the air after about 30 minutes. And at the time of his autopsy, it would be gone from his system. And the reason for his assassination was to cover up a uh, theft of $230 million from the Russian treasury. And they found out that the origination of Peripolechny's poison would be 90 years in the development, and it came from a place called the Chamber. The Chamber, also known as the Cell, was created in 1921, and its sole purpose was to create a tasteless, odorless, and untraceable after-death poison that would be used to silence political opposition. And before the end of the 1920s, the United States would be made aware of the Chamber. They knew it existed, they just didn't know where it was at. But in 1954, they would learn of the location of the chamber or the cell. A Soviet Union defector would come over to the United States and tell us that it was in the Lubyanka building uh, just outside of Moscow. Now, the interesting part of this poisoning is understanding how they tested it. So the idea of going through and creating different poisons and, and trying to figure out what works to be able to match their tasteless, odorless, and untraceable characteristics, they had to come up with a way to be able to test this reliably. And so what they ended up doing was using gulag prisoners. And now many times the gulag prisoners knew that something was afoot, something wasn't right, but there wasn't much they could do about it. And uh, these gulag prisoners would be identified based on their height and their weight and whatever they needed to be able to test this different chemical. They would call them in and say, we're gonna give you some medicine to help you with your ailment. Maybe they had a hurt foot or a hurt arm. They would give them the medicines. And really though, what was in that pill was either ricin or cyanide or something called curare, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. We don't know how many prisoners were killed because of this human experimentation, but we do know that it was in the several hundreds, if not thousands of people who were given these pills or given injections, they would succumb to the poison and then they would just be buried in mass graves. It's expected that this is not the first assassination that the Soviet Union carried out, but one of the first that they were caught for happened 26 years later after the creation of the cell in 1947. And the person that was executed was Isaiah Oggins. Isaiah Oggins was born in 1898 and he led a pretty normal childhood in Connecticut, the United States. But by the age of 25, he found himself to be a Soviet sympathizer and he claimed citizenship through the Workers' Party of America, which was kind of this underground independent socialist group that was here in the United States. Oggins would use his influence to be able to spy on American assets for the next 15 years. But due to his relationship of being an American, Soviet leadership became very weary of him, and they thought that he was a high risk of defection. So in 1939, they sent him to prison in the gulags for eight years on espionage charges. Eight years later, when he was set to be released, the leadership reviewed his file and said, there's too much risk that he might be repatriated to America, at which point he would give over all of our Soviet secrets. We should probably just take care of this problem today. And so they did. They marched him into a medical facility and accounts vary on this, whether he was injected or given a pill, but he was given the curare that we talked about earlier, which is the uh, a plant from Southern America that's used on poison dart tips that they would use to kill animals and uh, other humans during war. And over the next 30 minutes, Oggins would slowly lose motor function. He could no longer feel his arms or his legs. Everything went numb and he was paralyzed. And another 10 minutes later, he would eventually go unconscious and die from the curare. 
To cover up what they did, the Soviet Union would use sclerosis on his death certificate to say that there's nothing to see here, he wasn't poisoned, he just died of natural causes. And with the Cold War tensions kind of dying down and the Soviet Union dissolving, claims that the chamber and the cell had been closed down too, but poison is still a favorite of the even Russian Federation today. As recent as August 2020, Navalny, Alexei Navalny, fell ill on a flight to Moscow. He was quickly put into a medically induced coma so that he could recover, and then he was transferred out of country to Berlin, Germany. Navalny barely survived the encounter, and independent tests would later confirm that his blood and urine did show a nerve agent, something new that they had never seen before. And what's interesting about Navalny as being a target is that he was the uh, political opponent to uh, Vladimir Putin at the time. The sophistication of the nerve agent that was found in Navalny's system would indicate that a government party had to have been responsible for what he was undergoing. Navalny would go on to recover from his poisoning and he would come back into the Russian Federation. As of September 2021, Navalny is currently in prison in Russia given his opposition to Vladimir Putin. It's unbelievable that less than 10 years ago we had an undetectable poison that killed somebody in a wealthy London neighborhood right in front of all of his neighbors. How many other people were killed in similar fashions where Given their autopsy, would just go on to say that they died of a heart attack or a stroke or natural causes, or maybe they couldn't find anything at all. How many other people died in that same fashion? We may never know to what extent the Russian government will go to cover up their secrets or their shady dealings. There may even be some famous or infamous people that have been killed over time due to Russian poisonings or assassinations that we'll never know about. Thank you so much for your support. If you liked the video, please hit the like button below. And if you really liked the video, I would love to try to earn your subscription to the channel. And until next time, see ya.